Okay, this is now the five minute tarot for the 6th of June 2017. And I'm this is a little bit more about how to make use of the horoscope spread. And uh, I, I've been busy making audio video files um, more detailed or more in depth. I give I've, I've got all, the things almost finished and I'm going to add it to the tarot course, the tarot home study course site. Um, and it'll be a bonus for people who bought the course. But it's about the horoscope spread in detail so that with each house I talk about meanings, but also I give lo a number of examples for every house of what it would of the what it would mean for a particular card. So I talk about let's say the magician in the ninth house, what it would mean, and uh, the king of cups in the seventh. You know, I give examples like that in reverse, and then I show you how you can relate different areas of life to different cards. So I just finished the ninth house, and um, so the I was if you it's your philosophy of life, which is important to know. Because um, when you know what the person believes about what life is for, you've got a better way of judging how they react to different circumstances. Because if you think life is a school and we're here to learn lessons, you don't mind if things go badly. Whereas if you think that we're all doomed and life's dreadful and life is short and nasty, brutish and short, as Thomas Hobbes said, then bad things happening are considered to be normal and there's not a lot you can do about it. So depending on what you, your philosophy is, you're going to react differently to the same, two different, two people with different philosophies will react differently to the same circumstance. And so with the example of that, so if somebody's philosophy is the reverse five of, five of swords, that's the one with the person in the foreground who won. And then you've got the person going off to help and the person who's been defeated in the distance. So with the reverse nine of five, sorry, the reverse five of swords in the ninth house, you can think that um, there's no point in going to help people. So if it's a, it's a zero sum game, you, if, if you're not winning, you're losing. So there's no point in trying to help other people because maybe they'll help you tomorrow. It's all about now and I want to win right now. And if if I so if I don't defeat you, then I've lost. And that can be somebody's philosophy. So you want to, we, we can look at that reverse five of swords in the ninth and think this is not very good. But if it tells us if, if the horoscope spread is for um, three months and this is what they're like for three months, so they don't trust people. But then if you look at the seventh house, which is, shows the other people in their life and you've got the devil reversed, then this not trusting other people is a good thing given the circumstances or in the context of having the devil reverse, let's say, in the seventh house, other people are going to try and undermine you or tempt you or get you off track. So you're actually better off and safer if for the time being you don't immediately and automatically trust other people. So we, by by having by looking at the horoscope and the other houses, we get a better idea of whether a card is good or bad, generally speaking, good or bad. I didn't mean to say any of that, but it's too late now. So the, the other thing is, so far we've looked at, or in the last few videos, we looked at a horoscope spread and we looked at each individual card and what it would tell you about. But you can also use a horoscope spread um, to answer a question, not to answer many questions or questions in many areas of life. Tell me about me, my children, my mother, my father, my friends, my foreign travel and so on. You can do it that way. But let's say you've got a problem with um, another person. Let's say it's one of your children or a husband or wife. Okay, so let, let's say it's, it's your child and you, you've got this problem with a child. You can do a horoscope spread for what's happening with the child. So you've got the first house would be the relation, the state of the relationship 
between you and your child. Because you can find that um, the relationship is basically okay. So the, the problem with the child is temporary. Or you could find that there's a deep, a deep-seated difficulty in the relationship itself. So it's going to need work. It's going to need time to fix. So the first house is the self, not of a person, not of the questioner, but of the relationship itself. What's going on between the two people? Then the second house, which shows the value sense, would be the value sense of the relationship. So if you... Depending on what the card is, you would know whether taking a reasonable approach would work. Because sometimes you can explain things to people and they see the point and they change and they cooperate. Other people, you can give them reason after reason and it makes absolutely no difference because they don't care. And nothing you can say is going to change their mind. So you get an idea from the value sense of the relationship of how it can be treated or how you can get through to it, to the relationship itself. The third is how you, the, the relationship communicates. Um, so it gives you an idea of the kinds of arguments that will work. The fourth is the final outcome. So it'll give you an indication. Let's say it's for the relationship, how to solve it over the next few months. So the card in the fourth house, the final outcome, will show whether you've got a decent chance of fixing it or not. So if you get the sun there or a card like the sun, you will be able to fix it. Whereas if you get the devil reversed, it's going to take you more than three months to, to get this relationship back on track. The fifth is the children. So this shows what the relationship will, will give birth to, what will, what will be the follow-up, what will be the follow-on, what will be the results and the consequences of the relationship. The sixth shows the sickness of the relationship, what's wrong, what's getting in the way, what needs to be fixed, if anything, because you can have a good card here, in which case the relationship is actually quite healthy, um, whereas the relationship might need major surgery, depending on the card that shows up in the sixth house. The seventh house is the other people involved in the relationship, because let's say there's you not getting along with a child, but does the husband or wife has got a say, and maybe the child's brothers and sisters have got a say, and maybe the child's school friends have all got an opinion about what ought to happen. So the card in the seventh house will give you indications about what the, the contribution will be of other people involved in the relationship. So if you've got a good card, they'll be helpful and friendly. If you've got a bad card, like the Ten of Swords reverse, let's say, they're going to be trouble. And it can be an indication that you have to maybe in some way keep them away or keep them out or have an agreement with the child that you're going to keep this private, that what you talk about is private and then not to share it with other people because it's only going to get complicated and undo the good that you've done by having a meeting, let's say. Then the eighth is death and regeneration. This shows what kinds of experiences and conditions will help to bring about an improvement because you want the relationship to get better. Um, so maybe you, if it's a two of cups, you buy him a gift or her a gift, or maybe you go somewhere together and have a pleasant, maybe you go out for dinner, right? Because maybe normally you wouldn't think of going out for dinner with one of your children, but maybe you do. And, uh, but instead of you, you, you let them choose where they want to go. So you don't take them to some place you would take an adult, but you say to this 14-year-old, where do you want to go? And we'll go out and get something to eat. And you, you follow his lead or her lead. The ninth is the philosophy of the relationship, which goes back to what, what do people believe about mothers, children, fathers, children, um, relationships, relationships, what are they for? Um, because it may be that the... The, the, the child is just being difficult because it's a stage they're going through. Um, or maybe they feel unloved. And so they're looking for um, support from the people they go to school with. And because they, they, they know they're not going to find what they want with the parents, for instance. 
And again, the, the card in the ninth position will give you an idea of what the philosophy of the relationship is. But also the parent has to remember the the parent, he or she, also contributes to the philosophy of the relationship. So what they're going through, to some extent, is what they help to create. And they have to take responsibility in that area as well. The tenth is what the, what the relationship is like in the public. In public, rather, not in the public. In public, because the tenth is being before the public and... Um, Maybe it's the 10th and the 4th. You look at those two to know what conditions or situations or people or attitudes were the parents of the relationship. Right. So what, what caused, what, what, what brought about, what produced the difficult relationship? The 4th and the 10th will give you some idea. The 11th is the hopes and aspirations, what the relationship hopes for and maybe what it's capable of achieving. So you put that together with the final outcome and you get an idea of how difficult it's going to be to fix. And the 12th is a karma of the relationship. So it shows the difficulties or the problems or the lessons that have to be learned or that could be learned by the relationship itself, which gets you back to what the mother or father and what the child what they're all going to do, what their contribution is going to be to bring about an improvement or a change. So that's looking at using a horoscope spread to answer a particular problem or to, to come up with. So what you do is if you ask about a horoscope spread of the relationship itself, you come up with a lot of information that enables you to solve the problem or to fix it. You're not but you're not getting in the same in, in the way that a yes no spread or a past present future spread might give you a solution or the solution. It might tell you what to do. With a horoscope spread, you're given a lot of information that you then need to figure out and see what connects with what and how to put it all together. So you come up with a solution because of the thoughts that you've had in dealing with the different areas of the of the horoscope. You don't get a direct answer, right? So you've got information that you then need to put together to derive an answer or a solution. So you can do that with any kind of, of uh, a horoscope script can be used when you've got a little bit of time because it takes time to go through all 12 cards. So for any, if you've got a problem, it can be solved, but you then adjust the meanings of the houses to fit the question or to fit this problem that you're, that you're, that you're looking at, right? So the first house is the self of the problem, let's say, or the self of the question that has been asked. And the fourth is the final outcome, and the fifth is what comes from it, what develops out of it. You know, so you you work through and adapt the meanings of the houses and you end up with a huge amount of information that will enable you to solve the problem. And you'll also know whether it can be solved easily and quickly or whether it's going to take work and it's going to take a, a certain amount of time. Okay, that was that for the moment. Tomorrow will be something else. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.